the tournament here. We have seen, I think, some of the most ridiculous and funnest games we've ever seen in Darkest Dungeon. And I can say that because I'm not quite wasted right now. I've not drank that much. And man, I've been screaming. I've been hollering. These have been ridiculous games, Mike. And it can only go up from here, really. Truly an absurd start. Oh, absolutely, yes. And we are coming to this game, and the real Spartan brings the Hellion to the table once again. What is with this madman? Why Hellion? Why? But he won with this, right? So it's kind of a surprising pick, but at the same time, he somehow... I don't know how, but he just makes it work in the tournament setting. Because, sis, I couldn't make this work in like those very low veteran ranks. So I'm very surprised to see This is the perfect theme room, Mike, isn't it? About this tournament format here. Maybe it's a tournament format. Maybe it's that these people are just going, you know what, I'm good with this, I'll give it a try. But really, Helion is only weak because of the meta, what she's counted by. We are seeing so many Helions, so many occultists, so many flagellants here, really. I. It's anyone's game, Mike, really, isn't it, to be honest? This Hellion is really... We've seen it take games before. We've seen it really quite present, actually. It's maybe even been equally as present as a jester in some of our matchups, Mike. Yeah, that's true. I mean, Setra brings to the table the Mangle comp, so Mangle can also smirk a little bit right now, seeing his homebrewed composition just being played in the tournament setting and being fairly successful at that, right? So this composition is obviously high threat, high damage, high pressure, high stress, high everything. And that focus stress that, G that the GR provides for Setra is just going to be detrimental. I feel like this is just a big deal. Like whom you focus and how much damage you are able to pull, pull out is just absolutely the most important thing with the GR. So the GR is absolutely the core of this composition. Obviously, also the Abomination acts as a facilitator here, dropping those bellows, sorry, dropping those beast biles and providing additional DOT and repose. However, you have to feel that for Spartan right now, you prioritize this A-bomb. You just make sure that he never is able to use his abilities in this match. And we might just very, very, very well see that, right? Because he is already at about, what, 25% HP, bleeding heavily, probably gonna eat another stun right now. This is the question, like, do you want to just activate this A-bomb and just heal preemptively? No, you what want you to want to do is you want to activate the Abomination. You want to repost, right? Yeah, Maybe but if so you do this, you drop to zero. Who cares? Who, he's, no, he's activated it right now and he's at three health. Absolutely, see? it is. See? No, that, that was a bad play. What you do right there is you beast bar, you make sure if someone wants to attack on the next turn, they get the DOT back on them. That was a perfect place where he could have taken half a turn, maybe in that turn economy push. That's done there. Barf. Would have barfed back on that vessel. Those are DOTs. Maybe would have pushed him down in two turns instead of three, Mike. Potentially, yes, but I feel like Setra has like he just has a different plan. He's just trying to buy some time for himself. Like he knows this A bomb is just dead. So perhaps he's just trying to buy himself the time to land those crits of the darts, to land this big stress DOT, to land those reins of sorrows. And you can see this Hound Master also had a very heavy pressure. So he might just not be able to get this A bomb dead. And if Setra had not healed this, perhaps this A bomb would have just gone down to the Hellion, who is indeed very capable of delivering those death blows. So, yeah, it's just a strategic decision from Setra. I feel like we just have to respect it since, you know, he got kind of far into this tournament already as it is. And he, you know, he might just know what he's doing. I'm not really sure, like, I would have probably also gone aggressive there. So I have to agree with you in this regard. Like, he, he probably could have played this a bit more forward. But I do understand the rational, the, the rationale behind this decision to perhaps just allow this able to keep going for a single turn longer. I mean, Which... really, the Helion, the point of the Helion is that she is one of these few characters that has so many different abilities that really modify death blow, modify the mortality. Rather than taking a Jester with a finisher, or maybe something like a Bounty Hunt, you take that Helion there. There's more bleed damage, more DOT damage but really has such a potent variety of abilities that can actively affect the mortality rate and that death door resistance of everyone in Cetra's team. Yeah, so do you go for a push here if you if you are a Spartan as well? Or do you just try to kind of stabilize it? I don't think you can stabilize against the Mangle comp. There is only way and the way is forward, seriously. If you are playing against Mangle comp, you just have to overwhelm it or just kind of at least match it somehow. And I don't think Spartan is going to be capable of doing so right now. Maybe because this Abom still takes a single turn longer to be taken down. 
And I don't know how much bleed the, the A-bomb has, by the way. He might just be able to drop the, regena uh, the rejuvenating vapors and perhaps allow, the, allow this A-bomb to, to live a singleton longer, too. I mean, uh, that's part of the Cetra's abomination there. Really? Is put oh, and that dodges. Oh, that's well. a waste. And really, really, like really giving Spartan a fantastic yeah. chance here to take home. If I was to say who has got the advantage after those two very, very unfortunate kind of RNG occurrences. I say it's 50-50 here. Going yeah. for a fall across the board here. Whilst it does push the vessel on the hand mask out of that store, those are DOTs more than likely going to push them right back down, both afflicted as well. Yeah. If you have ever seen Mangal play his composition, you would know that he would have never gone for those darts on the hand mask because he's already resolved broken. And what Mangal does, he just spreads the DOT. So he would have either gone for the MAA here or he would have gone for the uh, for the Hellion. Absolutely. Because this would have allowed him to spread this DOT, just make sure everybody dies. And right now, this is just a wasted 10, which would have potentially been a guaranteed hit on the Hellion or on the MAA. So it's it kind is of unfortunate, a little bit smarter, honestly. right? I mean, Cetra here targeting the characters who both don't have Riposte on and who can't clear Bleed and Blight. If he was to focus down the Hellion as the third, then you could simply adrenaline rush. Oh, man! Yeah. We that, saw this that, coming, though. That's what the Hellion was for. That is what the Hellion is for. Yeah. That heavy death-dealing character. Really kind of an analogue to Bounty Hunter that I think right now, maybe even in this tournament, Mike, we are seeing the star to take precedent here. Oh, and it oh. might be crit there right back with the And robot. that's yeah, that's all Cetra has. Like he really needs this anti quarant to stay alive. I mean he can heal potentially with the with the flagellant, but this can be just blocked right now by uh by by Spartan, which he doesn't do. So the flagellant can bring this Hellion uh, sorry, this anti quarant potentially to full HP back again. They're still on the cards. I'm not sure whether this works or not, but this is still a possibility nonetheless. He probably well, will. The Flagellant now, one of the most powerful healing characters in the game, really. Yeah. He's so aggressive, but when he's alive, you say he's got the Founder of Crowns on him, Crown of Thorns, rather. <laughs> that really, really means the more he attacks, the more he is able to heal. Pushes him slightly down with that bleed every single time, paying off for him now, able to get the beam off. He's, oh wow! Yeah, that's pushing right back down to that storm, like. Yeah, there's another thing though that we have seen consistently from Cetra in this tournament already. He has been always using this flagellant to pressure the back line, but he didn't spread the pressure on time onto the front line ever. This is that. This is that Hamaster though. 100% dead. That crit, zero HP, dots, a dead that. HM from the get-go. I knew it. Oh. He's gone, Mike. Yeah, I think he's with Martin right now, still got a very good chance of taking home. What do you think? Oh, this Flagellant though? Like, the thing is, both the Hellion and the Flagellant are dazed. And it is going to be Cetra, I think, who gets to activate the Flagellant first. So if he survives up until that moment, he's going to be fine. But if he doesn't though, oh god, that's going to be very painful for, for Cetra. Because losing the Flagellant right now, so soon into the game, might indeed prove to be detrimental. That's a very smart move by Shepherd, though. We have to appreciate that because he does Absolutely. move the flagellant to Fed, which oh, means there is not that much there, can target that. And a miss there, Mike. Yeah. Ten percent chance. Really ball busting for Spartan there. Wanted to kill that flagellant. Really getting down right now. He can heal back. Flagellant right now is the only major support character left on Cedric's team. So Tarver does Spartan... From he goes for the stun! It's a dead blow though! Oh, oh he gets it! He was debuffed by the Hellion from before, so it's kind of natural that it happened, but... Oh god, you hate to see it if you're Cetra, like, losing this flagellant like this. Oh, that's so unfortunate. However, Cetra still does probably kill this Vestal right now. It's gonna be two versus two. And I feel this anti -quarian. if he starts healing with her right now, there's gonna be just a, an impossible game for Spartan to take that. I'm surprised. Frankly, I'm very surprised and baffled by those Vapors because this was just a guaranteed kill with no repose on the Vestal and he could have already started stacking those heals. He didn't do this now and it, like, okay, there is, he doesn't have the Iron Swan, right? He doesn't have the Iron Swan on the Hellion, so that's not a problem. That is one of the most important yeah. abilities, to be honest. And she's going to oh, save her, the guard no. fails. I mean, come on, I'm not sure about that, Mike, really. You want to be stuck on the pressure, you're all, are already behind him with that grave robber of four health. Indeed. And shadow phase you into a lunge. Man, I think Ruru Spartan is really kind of taking his foot off the accelerator here. 
in a fucking sorry straight up race to the finish line, right? Oh, you need a beep sound for that. We need to get you a beep sound. Whenever you try to curse, but yeah, this that 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 definitely makes sense. Yeah, like Setra. I, I feel like this is really unlosable for Setra at this at this point. Like there's so little backline access, and these guys are just gonna sit in the back as long as they're allowed. And honestly, the regeneration that Setra can start spamming at this point Ooh, is just gonna be absolutely huge. The face. Yeah, that's a very big hit as well. Like this penetrates the guard, right? This penetrates the no, it penetrates the protection that is, and that's just so big. It just ignored all the protection this MAA had, and yeah, that's just the deal breaker. I, I was feel. about to say the only way Spartan can win this may be by repost Bella spamming, trying to adrenaline rush, play very slowly and defensively, but Setra here, he knows that. He's picking oh, to the finally. face that Spartan was. Picking him right in the face, trying to rip it off. He drops the rejuvenating vapors, who really needs to start stacking these here we go. Those this corpses. Is here, right? This is here, This is Soul, that heal. Yeah, those corpses, they will not last forever. And he wants to be... See, this already both of them disappeared. This is the last down. possible moment for Setra to drop that region. And right now, it's just going to be Mano a Mano. And, you know, those are two melee characters against two somewhat squishy ranged ones. Obviously, Setra does hold an advantage. He also has double invisibility available. You can still remember shadow that. fade, but you can still shadow fade and then take cover here. Yeah, indeed. There's a Dude, lot of... Is, wow! There's so what much playing field that, here. Man? That's yeah. so on. Chooses to take the heli on there. Down to Death Stall rather than just attacking the mana arms there with Repost open. That Repost probably wouldn't have even killed the Graver, wouldn't have put it down to Death Stall. No. Could have taken the mana arms there, saved the Repost in that day, sir. Really interesting. But hey, we have been set up for a finish at double festering vapors. Boom, and it gets oh, heavy. Yeah, he dodges well, yeah. So I feel like Sheffield has, has been able to get this kind of convincing win despite some of his mistakes. Like, he has been able to pull through a lot of very solid moves, and this composition obviously not going to be available to him anymore, but it works, right? So, there is one more game he needs to secure to advance to the group phases. However, Spartan here, he really needs to re-strategize in this case. He needs, needs to think about, like, what he's going to be playing coming into the game number two. Because, again, you lose here, you're eliminated. Kind of brutal, I know, but it just had to be done. Because I'm mean, be sitting here until like midnight, or so. we, we are still that, gonna be sitting yeah. here until midnight anyway. But we yeah, are, we are. But it's, that's fun. That's fun. We don't I mean, fall I off, think right? We do qualifying games, man. Once they may seem a little bit cutthroat, we need to understand them really. I think this is all about player skill. RNG only plays so much of a role, but when you have the option to build four teams, ban one. And even on top of that, you can change not only one, boom. Your character placements, two, boom. You can change your skills, three, TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. Your heck dang trinkets, my friend. Every single thing anyone wants to change here, they can do. Indeed. People here who have more knowledge about the game, more ability to on the fly change their trinkets, because right now, there are only a few compositions, a few teams left for both players. You could easily change some of your trinkets around, some of your skills around, try and counterpick those, maybe put a stun on, put some heavy resistance trinkets on Mike. This is really what I wanted to see, and I think this is where the better players, the more knowledgeable all-round players are going to take it home. We're going to the game again. Oh god, so this might be the last game for Spartan. Or this might be just one of the two that he plays today. Let's see, guys. Let's see. Super hyped once again. So Setra has a lead coming into this. Obviously, let's see the composition space because this is what we are really uh, going to discuss at first. So Spartan here. This is the Spartan secret again, right? That's the secret composition by him. We love to see the secret, don't we? The secret yeah. that always pays off. Uh, the secret did show up huge in the previous one. This is why Spartan is still here with us today, right now, right? This is the Spartan that this is the Spartan secret that saved him, pushed him through over the edge into into the series right now. But he might just lose this. This Abon resists the movement though. That's so big. Twenty five percent. He gets the resist. This is the kind of thing. Whenever you take an abomination, you always want to think about taking that little movement trinket ability. Just because no one has 0% movement resist, right? Sometimes you want to go, listen, I'm smart enough. 
I want everything to be certain, yeah. Not only death and taxes, another one of these comps you've seen in this tournament, I want everything I do to be certain. If there's a 10% chance you don't hit it, one in 10 times in this tournament, guess what, Mike? You're not going to hit it. Yes, indeed. Uh, guys, but there is a question from the audience, like how to join the Discord. There's a link in the description below the stream that you can just use to access our Discord. By the way, I do recommend that you do follow me as well on Twitch and subscribe to me to, on YouTube to get like full access to the streams. Now let's continue guys into this Absolutely. fight here. This did slow down, it's kind of a slower fight. We see this wonky Crusader build by the way from Spartanus again. So he has the Aegis and he does Look at this Reign of Thoros though, powerfully resisting the yeah. blue death and the Antiquarian here. This Reign of Thoros really would start to punish Spartan's team beyond belief. Looking to turn five times six, they will be taking five bleeds damage per turn on both of them by three. 15, 30 on both in one ability. But it's such incredible turn of time. If you can really leverage it over this late game chance, we're going to see rejuvenated Ravers in a bit. Look at that. And he's healing himself. Yeah, Not indeed. going to do the bleed, but a very, very smart decision if he wants to take this into you know the very late game mike what do you think about this should he be pushing well he definitely does want to he gets it right now so this at least means that this arbalist is gonna waste a turn but say i feel like this arbalist doesn't really have a decent like a solid role on this composition right also sustaining like dro dropping those regions over and over again against this amount of dot's might not be your, your best bet if you're playing antiquar and if you're real spartan here so i'm kind of I feel uneasy in those stress versus stress matchups because it's just so hard to tell what the right call is gonna be just based on seeing the characters alone. So Sashra here playing very aggressively, on the other hand Spartan playing defensively. I wonder, like because previously this worked for him, right? This defensive play, healing, successively dropping those uh, those vapors with the, uh, the Antiquorn did indeed work quite well for Spartan. So maybe, just maybe, he knows exactly how this matchup works. He knows what it takes to bring it home. And I feel like this is what he's doing, right? At least he has confidence right now. He has confidence coming to this matchup. He knows what he has to do in order to win. He's just playing his win conditions. It might be looking quite dire right now, though, because he has taken a lot of stress already, whereas he hasn't delivered any. But maybe, just maybe, this is all planned. This is all something that he had already, you know, prepared coming to this matchup. He gets this pushback as well in the fraudulent, removing a single turn from Setra. So this might be exactly what he wants. He wants he wants a slow game. He can just stack those virtue chances. Maybe just maybe take it. And we can actually also see this abomination with a virtue trinket. This antiquarian with a virtue trinket as well. He knows he's gonna he knew coming into this game he was gonna play against some sort of an iteration of a stress composition. And he can prepare all that being fed Mike, look at Spartan stress right now. That is really starting to pile up compared to Cetris here. And Cetris comp here isn't necessarily a pure stress build. We've got a flagellant here. So while stealing stress does ridiculous DOT damage, especially with a hemlock to that back row. We see it doesn't have hemlock here, but still regardless, five by three every time. Call that a crit five by four. Yeah. 20 plus 15, that is an absurd amount of damage for one turn. Indeed, yeah. If Sephiroth here can take it longer, he might still take all. Oh, these stress heals here, I think, are simply... Too I believe little. they call it pissing in the wind, don't they? Pissing in the wind. Yeah, it is. I mean, that's also stacking the virtue chance, though, right? So maybe there's like a secret plan behind this. As I said, a lot of those virtue chances stack on this lineup of Sparta. We just might see the first virtue. That's not a virtue, he's abusive, though. And this indeed means this Crusader is the first Resolve Broken character. Like, let's see I mean, if other follows. Say we, we're stacking this Resolve. If others follow. You can only stack the dice so much, right? You're not oh! Stone Here we go. That is one of the best. That is one of the best. That I believe will give anti-stress kind of Yorps shells. And then everybody push. else in his team. So powerful there. Again, pushing that Fludgeon out here. He can only redeem. No offensive capability there. No chance to put stress on that backline. Really, really incredible. Putting the flagellant in one of his weakest positions, the only position really where he is almost useless, right? Because right now for Spartan, you are in the second position here. You're yeah. looking at Cetra, he's driving home. 
You need to put your foot on the accelerator. Boom, clutch, change. Boom, boom, fifth gear. Boom, boom. You keep pushing forward. You take this game home right now. That reclaim, defensive play, you push forward. You make it so he can't use a reclaim the gun on someone else. He's used up all of his healing. Take that 50% healing reduction up to 100%, yeah? You push. You've got an arbalest there. I think you should have pushed him, Mike. You should have pushed one. Yeah, you should have. Yeah, I agree. Like, I feel like Spot, like, we're into something that's an uncharted territory, really. As far as Spartan's comp and Spartan's play style comes into into this tournament, right? He, we, I have never seen a player do these things, and I really can't be the judge of this yet. I feel like though Sasha has a very pronounced advantage in this game, he's making all the right moves, and I just feel like Spartan is going too slow. Like he just needs to be eking out those big hits right now. He, he needs to be hitting, perhaps the abomination, perhaps the Houndmaster, but he's not doing anything. He hasn't accomplished any sort of. He hasn't had a single terror he came up with an advantage, right? He has a lot of very heavily stressed characters, his abomination almost dead. It's just so much pressure on him. He hasn't done anything to pressure Setra, he's been just healing and waiting. And I'm not sure if this is the healing waiting game. You are playing a, a hybrid comp with a lot of stress on the line as well, this might just not do it. I mean, every single game of Darkest Dungeon is a game where you can't really wait, right? Very, very, very few teams can really wait, especially games that just stress everything. Boom, smack. It's a stun as well, it's a stun. Right what if that's, that is called Saber's Affliction out there. Yeah. That's worse than a pass. Yeah, Someone that's what I was to say. Yeah, it's just way worse than a pass because you also do damage. Oh, no. Done, he stunned Mike. This is ridiculous. I mean, what can Spartan do to win here? Setra, it's only turn four, and Setra has just completely dominated the whole game. He's not even running a very heavy stress build. He's got a flagellant here to do damage, and he has still taken them all to this extreme level of stress, even with a virtuous abomination, Mike. This yeah. is ridiculous. That's true. It's like we see this alternate play style from Spartan just not reworking here. It did work before. A Rhino in this matchup is just probably not gonna cut it. Seriously, he had made zero advance in this game. Like, this is basically Setra, who is very healthy, zero resolve, broken. Excuse me, characters at ten five. It's outrageous. Nobody on Setra on Setra's team is resolve broken. We are five turns into the match right now. This should have been way more stress coming from this composition of Spartan, though. You have to admit it, this is like kind of a DOT damage comp, not more, more than a stress comp though. So that's why this is happening, I suppose. But still, you probably want to have at least an, you know, a resolved broken character by now or two. And this is just not the case. Obviously, a lot of map, map manipulation working in Spartan's favor, right? So every single turn, he has been able to do something with an on Abum, like pushing the characters off Setra and just displacing the composition that Setra has. However, this just doesn't seem to have been enough, right? It just has, it, this just has not been enough at all. Seeing this absolution here from Setra, obviously deciding that, you know what? Oh, I'm well, not past here. Yeah, but Spartan. also Setra got lucky because this was an afflicted move by the, by the Abomination, right? He was in, he couldn't have moved and healed, so he must have moved from Affliction. So this is very fortunate, well, absolute, honestly. Well, it, it's, it's very fortunate simply to dodge the Crusader stun, but really, didn't quite act out that way anyway. We need to factor in what he would have done. He's putting out a jealous accusation, trying to match the stress. Not going to work, is it? You can't match the stress at this point. We're coming to turn 5, turn 6 here. And your entire team is dead. You don't have that one clay art antiquarian like we had in these previous matches to kind of carry you home. I think for Spartan here, you need to try and just kill someone. I mean, what do you do, Mike? I think you start shooting one character, stunning, raging, just attacking one single character. It's so late in the game now. You aren't healing for sure, though. You can't heal this, can you? Can you really heal through this? Not at all, I not at all. I have this sensation that th this healing is just not accomplishing anything for Spartan. It's just kind of pushing him down the cliff, like deeper and deeper into the darkness. And this just... heal is a shovel right now. Yeah. He's a heart attack bingo. And that rejuvenation isn't enough to push him outside of that bleed range. He no. doesn't even have Hemlock on his fledgling here. 
and it's still enough to take him down. It is. It's like you have a resolve, like four resolve broken characters, 180, 190 on average, except for this, uh, uh, except for this aunt Quarren who has been able to dodge some of those attacks. It just feels terrible to be Spartan right now. It just, I don't see a world in, in which he wins. Maybe I'm wrong again though, because he didn't I mean, prove us wrong before. We say that, but we both might feel it. We say that with the perspective of players who watch this entire game play out. Both of these players here have every opportunity to take it home. Oh God, yeah. They have every opportunity to take it home, but they just are not taking it here. We could have seen some aggressive sniper shot players just Exactly! We want to see some aggressive play here from Spartan. When you're in the back foot, you need to take it home. And he's not done that so far. He's doing it right now as the clock ticks down to midnight, Mike. Yeah. He needs to take it. Maybe he can take it home now. I don't know. I don't know. This is Cetra's game to lose, and I don't think he will. We have seen Cetra throw a game away before, so it might just happen again. But honestly, if he just plays this slow and safe from here, I just don't see him losing this. Though I did say this today already, and I was wrong, so perhaps we should kind of, you know, keep our judgments at bay for a while. But it just feels unlosable for Cetra, honestly, it just feels unlosable. There are like 100, 980 characters. Uh, in terms of stress, obviously, there's just so much pressure. Obviously, we have two Resolve Broken characters for Cetra right now, but this is 10-6, man. This is 10-6, and Luke's just, like, this is too late. This is a remarkable kind of game state for turn 7. That's a Death Crusader, though, isn't it? Are. No, it's not, yes, actually, no. No, not quite this yet. Is gonna be, I thought this was going to be two damage. Now that he's oh, oh Abel down, though. Man. We have seen oh, both of these. Oh, again, another one. Attacks. These dominoes falling like dominoes. Exactly. Yeah. Spartan here, he had every opportunity, didn't he? He had lots of opportunities to play aggressively, and he just quite didn't. Even now, playing defensively, choosing to deal just the Crusader, what good is that going to do, Mike? No, nothing. Doesn't seem like there is an avenue for him to take over this game again. Like, if he had played this aggressively from the get-go, you have to feel that maybe he would have just lost to the, you know, the amount of pressure that Cetra has, because Cetra does have way, way more stress potential. He has four characters who are heavy stress dealers and also inflict a lot of DOTs. So perhaps just that he realized that he's not going to win the stress, but he tried this alternative way. You know, coming to this game, he could have faced one of the two comps, he faced this one. So maybe he had a plan against the second one, just got mind game, perhaps. It's really hard to tell, right? It's really hard to tell as far as the, the decision-making of those games goes. What we are seeing here is both players again. What I'm really looking forward to is a game where both players really take their time with these burning of the candles here. Because Spartan did heart attack again, three characters here, all very, very vulnerable. He had every opportunity to take it home, but he just did not think hard enough, Mike. Yeah. Why would you play this quickly when you were at such a disadvantage? I have no clue. I have no answer to this, man. Because a single Hound's Harry is what divides Cetra from victory right now. He's gonna kill probably two people and get this Crusader to death's door, and he's not gonna be able to heal anyone at all. So it just looks super, super dire for Spartan, seriously. And it looks like he might just be out of the tournament, though. As I said, like, not a good idea to be saying this like that. Look, there's gonna be just Reign of Sorrows. Those, those guys are dead. He's out. He's out. I'm oh, sorry, I'm Spartan. Oh, my God, yeah. It's, it's, just, it's just all done and dusted. It's all done and there dusted. Look at these dominoes fall. This is the thing. A lot of people will face this stress team, see three people die to heart attacks once ago. Oh, RNG, how powerful is stress. Yeah, her dash, stress what OP, right? Whilst this might not be planned for Cetra, not even really using a stress team, is it? No. Flagell isn't ostensibly a stress character. He's just doing duties, pushing them down to their store, making it so when the stress ticks down, you die. Spartan here, again, had every opportunity to take this into a victory, take it into a game, whatever. He didn't quite manage it. Cetra, proving his namesake again, the imperishable god. King of Kings. Yeah, and he does dominate this final game. He did kind of win the previous one in a somewhat convincing fashion, as far as I remember, too. So, a very well deserved spot in the group stages. So, we have this we have our first person advancing to the group stages. It is Cetra, aka Shepherd Doggo, if you know him from the stream, guys. Congratulations to Shepherd. I'm sorry, Spartan, but you are unfortunately out of the tournament.
and out of contention. But you know, this good is job so team. fantastic, Mike. Thank I you mean, for the wonderful games, guys. Everyone.